Hello viewers, you are going to have to trust me when I say there are stack loads of technical analysis tools, charts, indicators that you can use to you know, benefit your trading in one way, shape or form or the other. I know for a fact because I've tried and used most of them, I teach them to the professionals and I've had a lot of experience using it in the real world. So. There are some that are more popular and more used than others, and them in themselves have a self-fulfilling, you know, sort of nature about them because of the volume of use and the change, you know, we've seen in technology and the access to the markets and the charts that we now have. And one of those that I want to look at today is an oscillator. It's called the CCI. That's the Commodity channel index it's great for spotting trend reversals breakouts and you can use it brilliantly in combination with other tools to create effective strategies so in this video i'm going to take you quickly through the cci and i'm going to give you a few examples of how you can put it to some use in your trading and investing so with that let's crack on So let's fill in the backstory first. The CCI was designed by a guy called Donald R. Lambert. And as the name suggests, it was originally built for commodities and looking at how the cycles of commodity prices behave. And really the tool was just designed to identify those turns in those commodity prices you know, at particular high low levels so almost like a reversal tool you know, to aid timing in those markets. So in terms of the underlying construction of the CCI index, there's not too much to it really. It's quite straightforward. It looks at the current price with a moving average over a selected time period. The results are then normalized and the standard settings are between plus 100 and minus 100 based on the mean deviation so when you use your charts maybe you're in trading view whatever um, the recommended you know application of CCI is its default which is a third of the cycle so if you're looking at a 60 day period you take a 20 day CCI now why is this tool considered useful well it's good for identifying reversals and breakouts and also like I said, because of the mean deviation, you can expect 70 to 80 percent of the price action to fall between plus and minus 100. So when it goes outside those um, boundaries, that is a significant event that you need to pay attention to. So some basic uh, trading rules using the CCI then. Greater than 100 means a strong advance in the price. Less than 100 equals a strong decline. A move greater than 100 is bullish and a move back under that plus 100 is bearish. And vice versa, minus 100 bearish, you know, going back through that bullish. So like I said, outside of those bands, you know, it's a significant, you know, point of time in the price action. But some traders, and I do a blend of this which we'll see shortly in some of the ideas that I'm going to throw at you use a plus minus 100 so plus minus 200 level but then you've got to factor in the you know the asset that you're looking at the more volatile ones are more likely to get to that 200 level so maybe like FX which isn't so volatile maybe in the longer term time charts then you know the plus 100 minus 100 is good enough but you get into cryptocurrencies then maybe you need to think about addressing the cci and using the plus minus 200 level another great application for um, the cci is when you use it in conjunction with divergences and i'm just going to briefly explain for those that don't know how to sort of analyze um, what a divergence is and what it means I'm not going to spend too long on this it's pretty straightforward stuff we're looking for bearish and bullish divergence and it's probably easier if you head down to the drawings the bottom part of the page there to get a visual interpretation of what that means so 
On the left hand side we've got the bullish divergence. So on the top, that top arrow is the price moving trending downwards. And at that same time, the indicator that you're looking at, whether it's an RSI, Stochastic, MACD, in this instance the CCI is moving towards the price. And what that normally suggests is that we are due a bullish price move. And it's vice versa for the bearish divergence. You can see on the right hand side there the price moving up, the indicator moving away from the price, and that sort of big gap between the two building and then we will be looking for a bearish price move down. So bear that in mind and how to apply that when we look at the examples later in this video. It's about time we looked at a example of the CCI in action and we got a chart here. It's Diageo PLC UK company. On the bottom there is the CCI indicator. You can see the two black lines, the parallel lines there mark the plus minus 100 zone and you can see how the price action has dipped above and dipped below a few times over a period of quite a few months so that's to give you an idea of what it looks like and see how that marries into the price action so with that let's move on to the next stage of the analysis and take a look at some examples before we get into those examples, I'm going to throw you ideas you know, for setups in the world of CCI. Just going to run you through the list of technical tools I'm going to use here. Now I use CCI in combination with other indicators. Um, there's a rule in technical analysis called collinearity. You don't want to be using indicators built from the same, you know, inputs like the closing price for example you've got to mix it up so you might want volatility you might want volume you might want sentiment whatever it is you know if they're all lining up in the same direction that gives you more confidence that your trade is right so but in this instance i'll put combinations of technical indicators together we're going to look at two different chart types candlestick and the renko chart we're going to do two variants of the cci uh, in combination which i'll show you how to do that um, we want a long-term moving average set to 200. We want the directional movement indicator. We get rid of the ADX and we set that to a 20 period. And we use a stochastic as well, set to 533. Three. So that's pretty much what you need to know for the moment. If I throw any other technical indicators in there during you know, the next few minutes, I'll let you know what the inputs are. But that's the basic set. So with that, let's move into the first one, which is using the candlestick chart. I thought it'd be appropriate to start in commodities because that's where the whole idea sprang from. And in front of you, you can see a candlestick chart for crude oil, and it's WTI, and it's on a daily chart. Now, a good thing about CCI, it works in all sorts of time frames across all different markets. But remember what I said about the volatility and you know the inputs of the CCI, you've got to make sure they're appropriate to the market you're trading, especially if you lower those time frames down to the more fast intraday um, time setups. But we're going to stick with the daily one. Like I say, everything you see here will be you know transferable to all those other time frames and markets. And let's go through the inputs quickly. We got the longer term 200 day moving average on there. And down the bottom, we've got the DMI, which is a 20 input. And basically we're looking for crosses and with the blues above the red, it's bullish and the red above the blue bearish. Now here's what we're all here for. It's the CCI right in the middle. Now you can see the blue shaded area that is the 100 to minus 100 zone. And what I've done is I added a second CCI and then just dragged it on top of the first one and then just changed the inputs to the 200 mark. So that's that pink shaded area outside that because I like to have the 100 and 200 in there to see how extreme the spikes and you know out your know, breaks have been you know moving and how aggressive that momentum is building so from that my first i suppose point of call is we look at the divergence opportunities that the chart is providing so when the chart like this it's just a case of walking your way through now this is like say hindsight trading it's easy to do when you look back over time but 
again the same principles apply when you're live trading so you can see here over on the left we've got this trend going down and the CCI is also following it it's going that way you know with it so there's no divergences there so that is you know the trend continuation until you know something snaps and it reverses so let's try and see if we can find some divergence setups and then build together a sort of strategy around that so here's our first obvious example you can see the price trending upwards like so but we've also got the CCI moving down the opposite way so we've got a divergence there so that's triggering us to um, be aware that something might be about to happen and first trade idea you know we need some timing tool on top of the um, CCI so what you could say is when it breaks back down into the hundred we know that's then bearish then I would wait for the DMI to cross to bearish and then enter in so we would get in somewhere here maybe put the stop just above that high and then look at that nice trade all the way down now it's up to you how risk averse you want to be sometimes a factor in this longer term moving average it and only trade you know plus you know bullish trades to the above and you know negative bearish trades to the south in that certain combination but also I want to show you some other um, sort of ideas inside the candlestick chart here especially when we get a breakout above that sort of 200 zone so what I like about this example is it's sort of pre-warning nature um, the tool itself now you can see in the CCI it's actually moving sharply down but look what's still happening to the price it's topping the CCI you know, around about 2nd of March but look what happens I say to that price it's still continuing on upwards so this is a really interesting point it's warning us that that's becoming overheated and there could be a very you know quick pullback you know from that super high point so again you can be aggressive and wait for that to go through that minus 200 which would have got you in somewhere around about here you know you don't have to wait for the close you can break it through like the trend line um, it again depends on how risk averse you are and then we got this little down trade here ended very quickly some other rules to think about are the strength and the weaknesses in you know these sort of zones here we know that this is at the sort of wings of the activity which is very important for us to be aware of but you know if something moves back into this middle zone you know, has it got the strength to keep on going up or you know is it telling us that you know it really isn't a bullish reversal and all it can do is you know move on back downwards so as you can start to see just by looking at a simple candlestick chart maybe adding in a moving average like this as a trend filter for the direction and something like the DMI down the bottom when it crosses over for the last piece of the time in jigsaw you can actually get some decent trade ideas and setups built like I say across markets and time frames the key here is though like I said don't rush into the setup make sure it's appropriate to the market that you're trading test it thoroughly before going live so that's the candlestick chart now let's have a look at something completely different in the world of Renko so it doesn't just work on the traditional chart types we're in Renko one of my favorite chart types and as you can see in the bottom we've got the CCI it's got the plus 100 minus 100 I haven't had the 200s you know, bands on there we can see quite regularly how it breaks out you know and above that 100 zone and this is Ethereum and how do we use this well it's the same sort of rules really if you see how that breaks out and see what happens to the price you know when it dips back in as well we get the nice trades so you can use that just by itself but that's quite risky so what I do is which I didn't put in the um, setup 
of the tools used. I've got this actual Donkian band on here. As you can see that purple line there. And that's set with a 5-2 offset. And I wait for the price to have changed block colour. So if it's bullish to bearish, it's gone green to red. And then it's moved through that first top line there as confirmation. And if that confirmation on the price chart using the Donkian and the um, CCI concur, then I will trade it. And I'm not using any trend filter here. And statistically over the long term, this is quite a good trade. I've back tested it. It works quite nicely. Be careful of these little dips back in. They can cause false um, signals. But like I say, over the long term, you know, these work because you get these really nice trending periods. Tight risk management, you can use stops you know, either, you know, using the turns of the Renko chart as your levels to get some nice, you know, safe sort of areas for, you know, like I say that those stop levels. But, you know, this is a, a simple example of how to use um, CCI in other chart types. Again, go away and play with this sort of thing first. Don't just jump in because you've seen it on this video. It's worked for me because I've spent a long time tinkering and filtering and coming up with ideas um, for it. And I've got another one here which I didn't mention. You see these signals, you could maybe use those in conjunction with um, the CCI. Let me just see if I can give you the link to those in the um, setup here. They are called, as you can see over here, QQE signals. There it is. Look at the settings. 532.125. 2 and that will give you those buy and sell signals. So again, maybe use the whole combination of the um, three, the CCI the turning of the price and the signal short long or maybe you could use a higher time frame to filter out the signals altogether so it might cut out these you know small blips also I suppose another thing I haven't done for a while is the block size if you're using Renko charts the block size has to be really right so the more volatile you probably need a bigger block size but you don't want too big because then that will take away a lot of the trade action so with these sort of ones you can often get rid of those type of blips and signals if you um, spend some decent time working on the block size and relating that to the volatility of the instrument. So there you go, we've looked at candlesticks and Renko. Hopefully that's given you some ideas on how to use uh, the CCI. It's a great little tool um, and hope you can put it to some sort of use. Well, I hope you found that video useful. CCI is a nice little tool if used correctly. Like most things in trading, you know, spend your time, learn it, and then work out how to apply it, back test it, stress test it, then go live, and hopefully you can use it to your benefit. So if you've liked today's video, please don't forget to smash that uh, like button, hit the bell and subs buttons for us. It all helps the channel any other suggestions for videos content let me know in the contents below and all that's left for me to say is thanks for watching good luck with the trading and i'll see you in the next video